EQs are fairly intuitive to operate. We have all used them before. They are found in simple form in the tone controls of home stereo systems. The EQs that you use in mixing are not radically conceptually different from those tone controls. You have a frequency band and you have a gain amount, but there are some important differences. For the purposes of mixing, you want to be using a parametric EQ. A parametric EQ is a particular type of EQ which is well suited for precise and nuanced adjustments of frequency balance. It consists of several filters. Each of these filters creates a boost or cut in the frequency range, and its behavior is controlled by three adjustable parameters, frequency, gain, and Q. The frequency parameter sets the center frequency of the filter's action. The filter will not act only on this frequency, it will act on the center frequency and all of the frequencies surrounding it, with the intensity of the action steadily decreasing with distance from the center frequency. The width of the affected frequency range is controlled by the Q parameter. Lower Q values result in wider ranges, higher Q values result in narrower ranges. A sufficiently high Q will result in essentially only the center frequency being affected. The gain parameter is the simplest of the three parameters of a filter. It simply sets the amount of volume adjustment, specifically the amount of volume adjustment at the center frequency. A negative value will result in a cut and a positive value will result in a boost. So how do you decide on the values of the frequency, gain, and Q of a given filter? As with leveling, there is a procedure that you can follow. In this procedure, first you will find the frequency, and then you will find the gain and Q more or less together. In finding the center frequency, you first need to decide what general frequency range you want to affect and then what exact frequency you want to center on. Sometimes, particularly as you begin to develop your ear, you will know just from listening what frequency range you want to affect. If you don't know, then you will need to spend some time analyzing the frequency content of your sound. A spectrum analyzer can tell you where the critical ranges are, and it can also tell you about the presence of any non-essential frequencies that you might want to cut. To get a more nuanced perspective on the frequency content of your sound to really figure out what's what, you can employ a method known as the sweep technique. To perform the sweep technique, set your filter to a medium Q and a high gain and simply sweep it across the frequency spectrum, listening as you go. Once you have done a sweep, you will have a better idea of what each frequency range is contributing to your sound and you will be better equipped to decide which ranges you want to boost and cut. The sweep technique should be avoided whenever possible for two reasons. First, it is very tiring on the ears and second, after sweeping, your perception of the sound will be distorted and you will no longer be in a good position to make judgments about EQ. Don't go to great lengths to avoid sweeping, but don't do it when it's not really necessary. You'll find that it becomes necessary less often as you begin to develop an ear for what the different frequency ranges sound like. Presumably at this point, you've decided on a frequency range that you want to boost or cut. Now you have to decide on a precise frequency to set as your center frequency. Sometimes it doesn't really matter, just put the center frequency in more or less the center of the range that you want to affect, but if you have a tonal sound, then you can sometimes achieve a better effect by setting your center frequency to a prominent tonal frequency. To do this, you want to employ the sweep technique again, except over a narrower range, and with a very high Q rather than a low Q. The high Q will allow you to tune your center frequency to a strong tonal frequency in the sound. You will know that you have done this when you hear a loud ringing sound. Once you have found the center frequency, you should start to mess around with the gain and key values until you arrive at a satisfactory result. When boosting, I find myself generally using low to moderate key values such as 0.2 to 10 and less extreme gain values such as 0.2 to 4 decibels. While when cutting, I find myself using higher key values such as 7 plus and more extreme gain values such as negative 2 decibels or lower. This is the case for a variety of reasons as follows. When boosting, typically I'm boosting a critical range and often it sounds best to also give the frequencies around the critical range a slight boost, just to make the sound more natural. This accounts for the low Q value. The mild gain value is simply because it seldom sounds natural to give a single region of a sound an extreme boost and it can actually sometimes result in noticeable phase smearing, particularly with the high Q values. The smearing can manifest in its most blatant form as sustained ringing near the center frequency. You can 
can, of course, cut critical ranges, in which case similar principles apply in terms of cue and gain settings, but simply due to the nature of critical ranges, I don't usually want to cut them. More often, I'm dipping in between critical ranges to try and remove undesired frequencies, and I don't want to cut the desired frequencies, so a high cue value gives me the precise action necessary to do this. I often use a fairly extreme gain value simply because of the nature of what I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to remove or sustainably reduce undesired frequencies, not suitably reduce them. None of these things should be taken as rules. These are merely common patterns. Don't be afraid to boost with a high Q and a high gain if a situation calls for it. As always, use your ears as the final judge. It can sometimes be hard to judge the results of your EQing. One technique that is helpful is to toggle the bypass button on your EQ on and off to see what your EQing has done to the sound. Is it making the sound better or worse? With extreme EQing, the effects will be obvious. With subtle EQing, particularly boosts and cuts with less than 2 decibels or so in magnitude, they may be less so. In these cases, just sit back and listen to the music for a while, and it should become apparent whether the EQ adjustments are helping or hurting the sound. One final reminder, always bear in mind that you're not EQing the sound to sound good by itself. You're EQing it to sound good in the context of the mix. So while listening to the sound by itself can be helpful, ultimately your judgments have to be based on how it sounds in the mix. So far, I have made it an important omission. Parametric EQs usually supply you with a few different types of filters. In the preceding discussion, we have examined only one type of filter, the bandpass filter. The bandpass filter is the most common and important type of filter, but a few other common types of filters also require discussion. The next type of filters that we will look at is the high shelf and low shelf filter. High and low shelf filters have the same parameters as bandpass filters, frequency, gain, and Q. A high shelf filter boosts or cuts all the frequencies that are higher than its center frequency. A low shelf filter boosts or cuts all the frequencies that are lower than its center frequency. That is the simplification. A high shelf filter does not simply adjust the volume of all frequencies above its center frequency and none of the frequencies below its center frequency. As with bandpass filters, there is a curve involved, with a key value controlling the steepness of the curve. The center frequency is the frequency at which the volume adjustment is half as much as is promised by the gain value. The same applies to low shelf filters. High and low shelf filters are most useful when adjusting the balance of critical ranges when those critical ranges happen to be all frequencies above or below a certain frequency. They are also useful for reducing but not removing undesirable frequencies of the same description. To entirely remove frequencies above or below a certain frequency, you should use a high pass or low pass filter. A high pass filter cuts all frequencies below a certain frequency. However, rather than cutting all of them by the same amount as would a low shelf filter, the gain reduction becomes progressively more extreme with decreasing frequency until the gain reduction is so extreme that it amounts to complete removal. A high pass filter just has one parameter, the cutoff frequency. The cutoff frequency is the center of the action of the filter. The filter has already begun to act somewhat at the cutoff frequency, but not very much. A low pass filter is just the opposite of a high pass filter. Rather than cutting all the frequencies below the cutoff frequency, it cuts all frequencies above the cutoff frequency. Other than that, it behaves the same. Some low pass or high pass filters will also have a residence parameter, which may also be called Q. This residence slash Q parameter is rather unlike the Q parameter for the bandpass filters. What it does is it causes the frequencies in a narrow band around the cutoff frequency to be boosted. The higher the residence value, the more the frequencies are boosted. 